How's it going, everybody? My name's Mike Montgomery, and I'm in the middle of turning this school bus into a tiny house. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be building out the living room on Modern Builds. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Sellers. Now I know I can't be the only person that's thinking this video has been a long time coming. Not only have we built a bedroom, a bathroom, and a kitchen in this school bus tiny house, today we are building out the final interior space and that is the living room here in the front. So the space isn't huge, it's only six feet long and about five feet wide, three window lengths. Of course the living room wouldn't be complete without a sofa, and this one even converts out to a sleeper. And along the driver's side wall, I built out this really convenient office station with an expanding leaf to add more versatility to the space. And that's where we're gonna start building. I'm happy to report that I'm gonna be building something that is not out of three quarter inch radiata pine. The tabletop for this office station and the leaf are gonna be made out of three layers of half inch construction plywood. This is ACX plywood, which basically means it has one clean side, the A side you're looking at here, and then one ugly side, which is the C side. I just got done cutting the top and the bottom of this sandwich, and now I'm cutting a third piece to 16 inches wide so that I can make all of my pieces for the middle. I'm using wood glue and spring clamps to hold all of my pieces together, and by building up layers, I'm gonna create a slot or a groove that the leaf will be able to slide in and out of. As you can see, it's important that I don't put any wood glue down where I'm planning on creating that negative space, and I just used the actual piece that I'll be making my arms for the leaf out of for that. The slats of wood that I used for the extension arms in the leaf were supposed to be two inches wide, but I accidentally grabbed this three and a half inch wide board whenever I was doing my glue ups without realizing it. Otherwise, the ends of all of my boards would have met up. Now this isn't the biggest deal. It did offset the slots for the arms in the extension, but I was able to trim the slab to the same length it would have been anyways. So now that we've made our slightly oversized blank for our 16 inch wide countertop, we could do the same to create our eight inch wide extension. I'll be sure to leave an Amazon affiliate link down in the description for a six inch and a 12 inch speed square. These are just so great to have around on any DIY projects. At this point in the build, I realized that I hadn't used that two inch wide spacer that I meant to, but because I had already used the three and a half inch wide one on the countertop blank, I did the same thing for my leaf extension. The one thing that's important to note here is we do not want those arms to come out, so we are gluing them in place. Out here in the Joshua Tree Desert, wood glue dries in about 10 or 15 minutes, so I was able to test the fit of these really quick. All right, here we go. And unfortunately, I found that everything was just a little too snug. So that didn't work on the first try, but as always, I've got a plan. Simple problems usually have simple solutions, so I started by adding a taper onto the arms of the extension leaf. After I trimmed those pieces, I also hit them with some 80 grit sandpaper on the random orbit sander to round over the edges, and I could test the fit again. Super pro! Before moving on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Bright Sellers. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine club for customers 21 and up that pairs you with wines from all over the world and delivers them right to your door. I like drinking wine a few nights a week with dinner, but I am far from an expert. And that's what I love about Bright Cellars' quick seven question non-wine snobby quiz that lets them know your taste preferences and deliver you wines you're guaranteed to love. My favorite bottle of the bunch was this Merlot called Cactus Park. I enjoyed this quite a bit. It's an awesome summer wine and it's local. It's from Santa Rosa, California, which is not too far from Joshua Tree. The experts at Bright Cellars take pride in educating customers too. Wine education cards outline each bottle's tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperature, and origin. And if there's a wine that you don't like out of your first box, Bright Cellars will send you a replacement the following month. So if you're interested in learning more or you wanna take that seven question quiz to see what you get paired up with, make sure and follow the link down in my description where viewers of my channel are getting 50% off their first six bottle box at brightsellers.com. One more big thanks to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the build. In the last episode of this bus series, I used orange laminates to create monochromatic countertops and kitchen cabinets. That video will be linked down in the description. During that whole process, I completely fell in love with it. I think it's an awesome material. So for the office desk, I'm gonna be using this blue laminate to face the tabletop. 
What's so cool about Laminate is it's so easy to apply and it gives you such a durable finish. All you need to do is apply a couple of coats of rubber cement or contact cement to both the laminate and whatever your substrate is. Then you need to give it time to dry completely to the touch. You don't want it to be tacky whatsoever. For me, that took about 10 minutes, but on the can it says it can take up to an hour. Especially on large laminate sheets, you wanna use riser blocks between your substrate and the laminate. That way you can line everything up and slowly lower it onto the material. If possible, you wanna work from the center out, making sure to remove any air bubbles as you go. Then you'll use what's called a seam roller or a J roller, also linked down below, to get rid of any imperfections or air bubbles. Thankfully, I only needed to use the router with a flush trim bit on one edge, and that was on the same side that the arms are on for the extension. On all of the other edges and ends, I was able to use the circular saw to make two passes to trim everything flush at once. And now we just need to make sure everything still lines up and fits. Perfect. Okay, so this is certified super pro. It looks good, it feels good, and it fits great. Now we just need to build a base for this top, and it needs oh, to be able to store this extension or the leaf. Since the arms that I needed to make the base for are offset, I figured it would be easier just to mark and cut all of my pieces in place. And I made sure to be generous and take the line with my cuts. That way there would be plenty of wiggle room for that extension to be able to slide out and be able to put back in easily. I used scrap wood as riser blocks so that the base would be flush with the extension. This whole process was pretty fun and something new for me to try. Throughout this bus series, I've been stacking plywood to make furniture and built-ins way more than I typically do. It really opens up some doors to make some creative pieces without a lot of tools. I'm pretty much always on a quest to make use of any scrap materials I can, especially since I've got all of this radiata pine plywood laying around, and I was fortunate enough to have these two pieces that made the perfect leg blank. I used my circular saw and a straight edge to trim all of my edges square using the first edge as my reference for all the others. Attaching this leg was easy because I had those stacked layers of plywood square on the ends. I used more of those long trim head screws that you see me using all the time and I came back with some DAP wood filler to fill in any of those screw head recesses or anywhere that I had nail heads that I needed to cover up. This natural color is the best that I've ever used. Links are down in the description along with all the other tools, materials, and supplies for this project. My favorite thing about using the circular saw to trim the laminate and the plywood is that I have an almost finish ready edge right from the saw. I just use a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. I almost feel like I shouldn't say it, but that's super pro, come on. Just like on the rest of these bus episodes, I added some one x three trim to the top of the plywood half walls before I installed the countertops for this office setup. At this point, I was grateful that everything installed smoothly and the extension leaf worked great. On the opposite side of this living room, I'm gonna be creating a DIY sleeper sofa. I did a little bit of digging online and I found this futon for just about $200. I figured this would be a great solution to build a sofa around because it's already got the futon mechanisms and the upholstery done. Not to mention, you can buy one of these for way cheaper than you can get custom upholstery done. So this is gonna be a fun DIY. 
The main reason I'm doing this is because I want to hide the wheel well underneath the sofa. I just don't think it would look good. And I also need to raise this entire platform up. Now the easiest route would just be to build a really simple platform for this sofa, but I'm going to go the extra mile, do it the modern builds way and build the best sofa I can out of this futon. Let's do it. The wheel wells are right about nine inches tall at their highest point. So I made sure I had about nine and a half inch clearance between my platform and the floor on the sofa I built. Otherwise, I would have cut my legs to be about eight inches tall. The back leg for this sofa is glued up out of two layers of three quarter inch plywood. The front layer is also two layers of the same plywood, but they won't be glued together. This is gonna allow everything to slide. The platform that I'm making is gonna be the exact same size as the base for the futon that I built. It's gonna be made up of two sections that slide together using these slats as guides. It was really important that I kept my 12 inch speed square with me. That way I installed all of my slats in pieces, square and straight. It was also really important that I kept track of what I was gluing and screwing together. These eighth inch spacers that I used between my boards allowed enough wiggle room for everything to slide, but if I built this project again, I would have used half inch spacers instead. Regardless, now you can see how everything works together. The legs were cut to the exact same length as the rest of the platform, so installing these was a matter of just lining everything up and screwing it together. I effectively made dado grooves in my plywood base by stacking up layers of plywood, sandwiching the back leg in place. I basically did the same steps for the front leg, but I just made sure not to attach my two legs together. As I mentioned earlier, just be really careful where you're applying glue so that you don't accidentally make it to where your frame can't slide. In this leg assembly, the front piece attaches to the sliding portion of the base, while the back piece of the front leg attaches to the stationary part. This allows them to slide apart and nest back together, and no one is the wiser. I would have used the original arms of the sofa. I really liked that they were upholstered, but unfortunately, they didn't extend all the way to the back of the platform, which created a weird negative space between the back of the sofa and the wall. To be honest though, I was not bummed at all. I've been wanting to make a plywood side sofa for a long time with this little detail that follows the back profile of the cushions. And I know this little 30 degree cut isn't anything crazy, but it's a small, simple detail that does enough to make this piece more unique. And once I had my two sides attached with a lot of wood glue and a few more screws, I could test the futon and make sure that it actually fits into the frame. Then once I had it in place, I attached the sliding portion of the frame onto that futon base. And now you can see how our front legs are able to separate with the sofa, allowing the back to lay down into a sleeper. Overall, this went great and I was excited to see it work as well as it did. And now it was time to do a little bit of alterations to the frame so that I could fit around the wheel well. If I realized how difficult it would have been to make this jigsaw cut before I made the frame, I would have cut these legs to fit. Unfortunately, I just didn't think of it, but I was able to make everything work out in the end. Perfect fit. And it hides the wheel well. I didn't have very much room to work inside the bus, but I was able to scoot the front of the sofa in place. Oh, oh man, we're the right on the head. And after dropping my camera, I was able to get the futon where it was supposed to be. And with that, this living room is complete. So nothing too crazy in this space. Functionality really is the name of the game. I wanted to be sure that I had plenty of flex space for hanging out and working. The sofa is great for this. It looks good and is comfortable. Plus it's great to have room for an extra person to sleep. There is a cool theme running through this living room though, and that's that everything moves or is multi-purpose. For the majority of the time, I think the 16 inch table on the opposite wall will be fine, but it will be really nice to get that extending leaf so that the table can extend past the wheel well when it needs to. So this is gonna be the final interior build out episode of this series. We've still gotta paint the outside and install all the septic and holding tanks underneath. But aside from that, I'm gonna be repainting these floors just to make everything look nice 
and adding a few personal touches throughout the space. Eventually, I'll be doing a full school bus tiny house tour video live on this channel. So make sure and click the subscribe button down below. Aside from that, make sure and follow me on Instagram at Modern Builds so you can keep up with me between videos. And until next time, this has been Modern Builds. Bye, everybody.